Welcome back guys to Steven's DIY Auto Repair. We're back here in this 2004 Toyota Camry with another check engine light. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so I have a previous three part video out on the check engine light for the P0031 code, which is bank one, sensor one. And since then we have replaced it with the proper one and we have no more codes for that. But two or three days later, we have a check engine light again. And I'll show you those codes now. So let's turn on the vehicle. As you can see, we have the check engine light. Okay, well now we are getting um, codes for P2423, which is your HC, your hydrocarbon absorption catalyst efficiency below threshold, bank one. So we look to see Same code, and now we have a code for P0137, which is O2 circuit low voltage bank one sensor two. Okay guys, so I've been running this for a while now, uh, monitoring all the, the PIDs, and um, I haven't been able to get to it because I've been busy, but um, basically, We've been getting a lot of the codes for the catalytic converter. And every once in a while, getting a code for the oxygen sensor, bank one sensor two. Okay guys, so before we go underneath the car and take a look at the O2 sensor, just to give you a little backstory. So the way this system works is you have your bank one sensor one air fuel ratio sensor and then you have your bank one uh bank one sensor two and that basically is right before the catalytic converter and then you have your bank one sensor three which is right after the catalytic converter and the way those two works at least throwing that um catalytic converter code is if the voltage from sensor two is the same as sensor three or the wavelength is the same as sensor three for so long for so many seconds so many times it will throw that code so basically um, it's saying that your catalytic converter is not working efficiently which means what's coming in is exactly what's going out and that's why it's throwing that code for the catalytic converter but it might not be the catalytic converter and I'm hoping not. Um, sensor, bank one sensor two can also be faulty. So to give you a little backstory on that, I did do a ohms test on the heater circuit and it was, it was good. Um, prior to that, I had to clean a lot of oil um, off the wiring harness, the sensor itself. There was a lot of oil caked on it. So that could have uh, contributed to the failure of the oxygen sensor. So I, since then I cleaned it up. Um, I did some readings of the wiring harness from the sensor to the computer. It checks out okay. Even the O2 sensor uh, heater circuit itself, ohm reading was good, but I have a feeling that the O2 sensor is bad. Um, I could do some more tests to confirm that, but at this point I'm narrowing it down to either the bad sensor or a bad catalytic converter. And since the sensor is a lot cheaper than the catalytic converter, I'm going to go ahead and try that because I don't necessarily have the exhaust analyzer to uh, analyze the exhaust that's coming out um, or some, some of the specialty tools that you're going to need for um, checking the exhaust system. So let's go into the car.
Okay guys, so here in front of you, we have a special oxygen sensor and diesel injection socket set. So this is a pretty handy tool if it's hard to get to your O2 sensors. In my case, I could just use a simple combination wrench, but in some cases, you want to use this special socket. And the reason why it's so special is because you can put your um, your, uh, your socket wrench on it, and it's got this cutout so that the wire can go in inside here and you can put it on. So actually, I'll try to demonstrate this underneath the car today. So without further ado, let's go into the car and take it off. Okay guys, so we're into the car now. And here's our bank one oxygen sensor number two. And there's the connector. And I'm telling you, this whole thing was just coated in oil. Coated, I mean, you couldn't even see this, this connector here. It was just, just black with oil. And who knows how long it's been that way. So I'm, sus I'm suspecting that all that oil caked on there probably ruined our sensor. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, replace it. So if you go back, there's our catalytic converter. And then if you go back farther, there's bank one sensor three. And that one looks actually pretty old too, which we actually might end up replacing as well. We might actually have to replace the catalytic converter, but I'm hoping we don't. So anyway, let's go ahead and take this off. Okay guys, so we have an epic fail here. <laughs> so we're not gonna be able to show you how to take it off with this special tool because you got part of the subframe here in, in the way and it's just not gonna work. So I'm just gonna use an open end wrench, but the theory behind this is this is how it goes. So you can have room for the wire and you can still get it on the, on the nut there. So that's, that's how that works but we're not gonna be able to do it today. So we'll just use an open end wrench. Okay guys, so it's gonna be seven eighths. Get it on there and break it loose. Oh wow, sorry guys, look at that. Let me take it out from under the car and show you guys. All right guys, look at that. That is toasty. Sorry, I keep. Wow. I'm thinking that's our problem right there, guys. See if that light helps us. Look at all that. Look at all that build up. That probably where that oil had seeped in. All right, well, let's throw the new one in. All right, guys, so here we go with our Denso oxygen sensor. And this one for the middle one, before the catalytic converter, it's still gonna be upstream. It's gonna be part number 2344624. So, 
there you go. So, um, on this vehicle, we have two upstream, and upstream is basically um, from the catalytic converter up to the exhaust manifold. So, we have two upstreams and one downstream, and downstream just means after the catalytic converter. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and see if I can unbox this with one hand. There you go. Nice brand new oxygen sensor with the uh, antices that we're gonna put on the threads, just like the other one. All right, so now I'll take you guys under the vehicle. Okay, as you guys can see, hopefully we have a little bit of antices on our threads. We're just gonna stick it right in. I could get it to screw in. Hand tight. Come over here. Make sure we're not tangling our wires. We're gonna go ahead and snug it up. Hear the click, and we're good to go. There you have it, guys. Pretty simple oxygen sensor change. All right, guys, there you have it. Simple bank one sensor two oxygen sensor change. So now all that's left to do is clear the code, clear the codes, and drive it for a few days. And hopefully, the check engine light doesn't come back on. Um, if it does, then we'll bring you guys back for a part two, but I hope we don't have to bring you guys back for a part two, because if we do, more than likely, it's probably going to be the catalytic converter. Um, it's very plausible that it is because I don't know how long this car has been driven with the check engine light on. And when you have a bad air fuel mixture, um whether it's dumping too much gas or, or whatever the case may be, it's gonna eventually uh, wear out your catalytic converter because um, if it's been operating with the check engine light for so long, it's gonna just deteriorate that catalytic converter. So that's my fear, hopefully not. But anyway, enough rambling on. Um, hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys would like to be notified when I put out another video, make sure you guys hit that notification bell. Subscribe to my channel for more informational videos, as well as DIY projects, as well as the continuous maintenance of this 2004 Toyota Camry. Um, but anyway, guys, have a good until next time. Have a good one.